Wealth of Nation, Human Capital Development, Elijah Felix. Human Capital Development, simply put, is the framework for building or developing skills, knowledge, and abilities in an organization, which in turn improves an organization or community's effectiveness. Across the world, nations have been making efforts to tap into the endless possibilities of human talents to enhance growth and development. Narrowing down to the Nigerian contents, it could be inferred that we have overlooked the aspect of human development, thereby diminishing the core of nation building. As a nation reflecting on our human capacity progress, we can see that much has not been achieved through the years and at 61, despite the lag in that regard, the youth are thriving to achieve self-development by creating something out of nothing. This is evident in the offshoot of fintech or other tech-related businesses. No doubt, Nigeria is blessed with talented individuals and great minds. Looking beyond inanimate resources is a step ahead in developing a nation's human potential. Human capacity development plays a huge role in the workforce of any given society, not just to develop competencies at various levels, but act also as a major eradicator of poverty in society. The big question is how do we tap from the gold mine of human capital development? First, we need to implement the strategy of target demography, which is the youth and the women. Secondly, putting machineries and strategies in place, like creating opportunities, building national and global partnerships to enhance skills development, especially in technology transfer, imbibing the culture of intergenerational mentoring and relevant skill transfer, addressing basic issues like security, intercultural differences, infrastructure and healthcare system. In addressing the aforementioned, the conversation and strategies to strengthen human development in Nigeria can be put to motion through addressing necessary needs and the government adopting a progressive and global-centric approach. The world as it is, is a global village and developmental skill sets are becoming more universal than ever because eight great treasures lies in the human personalities. I think this is a very, very amazing uh, opinion, thoughts that you have here, because no nation can ever, ever thrive you know, without human capital development. And it has to even be the foundation for any form of nation building, any form of development, because yes, the infrastructures are good, but then who are the people that will build infrastructures? It has to be people who are well equipped, who are well built, you know, who understand the vision of a nation. It's actually the humans, the people, the citizens that will cast a vision for where they want their nation to be. They understand what the infrastructure is. They are the ones to manage, maintain, and uh, sustain whatever plan, projects that are being built. So I really think that human capital development is very, very powerful. And you also mentioned something global, being global centric in nature. So I think we also have to understand that our competition is no longer, you know, our neighbors in the village, you no longer village people, right? Yeah. Our competitions <laughs> are now people in China, people yeah, in the yeah, Russia yeah. and all that. And I think it's very, very amazing. Yeah. Well, before you, before you just speak really, I, I just want something from Raymond. You know, Raymond, this is kind of in a way related to what you said before about um, um, the issue around serving and the rest. Yeah. And you know, we cannot grow beyond Nigeria as Nigerian. I tell people that Nigeria is not a ge geographical region, mm -hmm. it's your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, in the issue of dealing with an average youth mindset, because mm -hmm. this is a mindset thing, yeah. and then developing the mind, the mind works yeah. like a software. Yeah. How can we intentionally remove the quote unquote, yeah. the junk from some, mm -hmm. not all Nigerian youth, yeah. because we need to market our country as a great one, as we are great people. So, so I think that the first thing that has to happen is that we must learn how to take care of basic things. So there's a quote I learned when I started, build, um, started building that if you learn how to take care of basic things around your life, you will open up your mind to think about big things. So the problem I think that we have as average Nigerians is also the fact that we, are, we keep struggling with basic needs. We keep struggling with basic things. Uh, we keep struggling with electricity. Now you're talking about tech. You're talking about all those things. You can't press a laptop. You can't do anything. You can't generate an idea if there is no electricity, if there is no power. You can't move from one place to another if the roads are bad. So I think first thing we need to do is to address basics. How do we address the basic needs? If we can address all those basic needs, then we'll start opening up our mind to think about big things. Because junks 
uh, trying to beg for food, little, little things will no longer matter anymore because those ones have been taken care of. Think about developed countries. The, the things we are praying for are not even a prayer there. The things we are sweating to fast 21 days, 72 days praying and fasting, it doesn't matter there. Look at the quality of their thoughts. So until we get the basic needs, sort them out, nothing else is going to matter. Yeah, your thoughts, sir. So, so um, I think we Nigerian youth have done really very well yeah. within the huge constraint that we have in our environment. Mm. You know, I like what you talked, what you said about electricity. Mm. If you have to, because there are times that you might be working and then power goes. Let's say you don't have, a, you don't have an inverter, yeah. uh, you are using a desktop computer. Now, the moment power goes... Your brain shall start shutting down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your, 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 train, your, your train of thought yeah. is disrupted. Exactly. You might never be able to come back exactly. to that. So, so there are a lot of things that the Nigerian youth has had to grapple with for so many years. Uh, it's really impressive how well we have done globally, especially in the area of tech. Yeah. The Nigerian youth have done very well. Uh, so if you look at it from the perspective of human capital development, one of the things you will see is that the Nigerian youth has learned to be self-taught. Mm -hmm. Let's be very honest. Many of us go to universities, <laughs> but we come out of universities really unemployable. Uh, there are people that, in those days, I heard of people that studied computer science, never saw a computer, yeah. wow. never put on a computer. Yeah. So they had to teach themselves. They had to take certifications, do CCNA. Do, you see, the, Niger the Nigerian, the average Nigerian can, can just keep learning, keep pushing and keep learning. So you need to admire how much we have, we, we have achieved or done as self-thought people. So imagine what would now happen if we can be structured and we can carry everybody along, we can push everybody yeah. along, we can put the right things in place. And I think it's already happening. Uh, Mr. Raymond is online. Mr. Raymond, do you have any uh, th thoughts to share with us? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, for me, I think it was um, Mr. Raymond, uh, my namesake on the panels today, who talked about going back to the basics. And I quite agree. Um, in the context, in our own context, where we have um, a situation where all the basic social structures uh, that, would, um, that would give the average Nigerian the traction to thrive, in a situation where they are lacking, then you can imagine what becomes of um, our, our uh, the wealth of our human resource. So I'm talking about investment in um, in education. Uh, this is a country where we have over uh, 10 to 20, 10 to 12 million out of school children. What does that tell you? Uh, we have a young we have a young population which ought to be um, a strength, an economic strength, as it were. But unfortunately, because of the paucity or the poor investment in education, uh, that number is becoming uh, sort of a liability. The thing is, um, what's re what you said, I quite agree with what all of us said. But the, the idea is, it amazes me how the government spends so much money and energy talking about uh, tangible resources. Tangible, tang let's say inanimate tangible resources like um, we have good in Zamfara that is causing a very big conflict. They deploy soldiers. A lot of them have died there, protecting Nigeria, protecting the resources from illegal mining. Same if you go to countries, uh, states like Plateau, and then you go to the Niger Delta region, the oil rich region. Now we don't see government putting effort in supporting youth that could bring technological revolution. You know we have a lot of young guys doing a lot of stuff, and then instead when they walk around the street with their bags, the next thing police is asking you, what what are you using the laptop to do? What's, 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 what's up with your I, iPhone? I think These it's been very, a very, very, very great challenge for us, but I hope that we get to conquer that in the next 61. Omoni wraps up after the break.